DxOMark is a website that does extremely rigorous scientific testing on cameras, lenses, but specifically camera sensors. And this data, I find it tremendously useful. I love the work that DxOMark does. You can learn a lot from it, and I'll give you a link to do that in just a second. But here's the thing, the data that gets shared across all the blogs, the data that the most people consume is not only kind of useless, it's often misleading. And I've seen people time and time again buy cameras based on these high level summary numbers and uh, spend thousands of dollars on it and only to not get the results that they were looking for. So I wanted to cover this just quickly because the Canon EOS R tests were just published by DxO Mark and some of the data is not very meaningful. Like here's a comparison of the top level scores between the Canon EOS R and the Nikon Z6 and the same scores between the EOS R and the Sony a7 III. And these numbers would lead you to believe that the Z6 and the a7 III have substantially better image quality than the Canon EOS R. But we did like real testing just of the image quality and we found that not to be the case. I liked the images from the EOS R in most circumstances better largely because the EOS R has 30 megapixels and these two cameras have 20 more megapixels, 24 megapixels and 25% more megapixels. That's meaningful, but it's one of the many things that is not included in this high level score. So first, let me take a second and send you all to stp.io slash repair poll, where I am gathering information about people who've had camera repairs. So if you have had a camera repair, please go and fill this out. And if you want to actually learn how to pull that useful information out of DxO Mark. Watch this video from three years ago where a much younger Tony Northrup will tell you all about it. First, let me say DxO Mark measures just image quality. They don't measure focusing accuracy or how fun a camera is to use or how useful a flip screen is. And therefore, that, that's already kind of misleading because so many people nowadays think image quality is the most important thing. But realistically, as somebody who's been testing these cameras for a long time, image quality, there's not the differences just aren't that big anymore, especially in practical terms. A few years ago, the differences between cameras was substantial enough that, especially for our commercial work, getting a better image quality, a camera with better image quality would save us a lot of time and a lot of money. Nowadays, we just don't see that much difference. Here are some things that are not measured at all by DxO Mark. Features like pixel shift and high res mode, which will move the sensor and capture multiple frames. Th these features have the capability to reduce the noise fourfold in an image or even eightfold. That's like two stops or three stops. They'll also eliminate moiré and uh, just generally create so much of a sharper, clearer picture. Cameras like the Olympus EM1X, the Sony A7R Mark III, the Pentax K1 and Mark II have this awesome feature and we absolutely love it. So check out our reviews of those things because DxO Mark doesn't test that. It doesn't test computational photography at all, which is becoming more and more important. And when we, when we reviewed the EM1X, it has a sensor a quarter the size of the A7R3, but in a lot of conditions, the EM1X produced better image quality than the A7R3, or at least similar image quality. And though DxO Mark hasn't tested that camera yet, I know it won't score very well because it has such a small sensor. And thus, I think they're not giving you the whole picture. Speaking of computational photography, this picture of Orion, you can see his belt there and his sword down here. I took that with my Google Pixel 3 smartphone handheld. And I did the same picture with a Sony and a Fuji X-T3. And you know what? The Google Pixel picture looked better. Handheld, I'm talking about, because it takes advantage of computational photography. This night shooting feature in it is amazing and it's a really powerful feature and that's going to become increasingly important. A DxO Mark does not factor in the aspect ratio and that can be important too. Like if you're shooting 8 by 10s, the micro four third sensor is closer to the 8 by 10 aspect ratio and thus will produce, uh, give you more useful detail because with a full frame camera you end up cropping off so much but it doesn't factor that in. It doesn't factor in anti-aliasing or what they call optical low-pass filters, which are on a lot of cameras, including this EOS R, the a7 III, the Nikon Z6, but they're not on other cameras like the Z7 or the a7R3. And those AA filters can dramatically change the actual sharpness and image quality that you get from a picture.
Some people like them. It's good for photographing fabric, but it's terrible for, say, photographing wildlife. Not included in the score. They do not care about megapixels, which is kind of my biggest gripe. And when you factor out megapixels, it means that cameras like the uh, 30, the 42, 45 megapixel D850 get the same score as a 12 megapixel a7s but then when we shoot them in real life you'll see that the higher megapixel cameras just produce visually better images and it's not captured in the score they also don't factor in things like banding which a lot of recent mirrorless cameras really struggle with now a lot of the times the banding comes up in only obscure situations but then recently i've talked to multiple wedding photographers trying to shoot weddings with a sony a9 and they had to go back to their older cameras because the electronic shutter on it was causing banding in like low light receptions and stuff. It's this very practical thing that was wrecking their images and preventing them from getting the job done, but it's not gonna show up in the, uh, the DxO mark scores. It also doesn't factor in sensor stabilization, which lets you shoot with slower shutter speeds while giving you sharp results handheld with any lens. And that's like so powerful. And they also, Maybe the biggest thing, don't factor in lens quality and speed unless you go to, you dig into the data and you find lenses that they've actually measured. Because they will measure some lenses and that's incredibly useful data, but it's not included in a camera's overall score. And I'll show you an example of how meaningful that is in just a second. Here's a really big example. The Hasselblad X1D has one of the highest scores ever measured by DxO Mark. It has a bigger than full frame medium format sensor, 50 megapixels, and thus it beat one of our favorite cameras of all time, the Nikon D850. We were excited to get it in and test it, and you should watch our full Hasselblad X1D review because weirdly, even though the Hasselblad got a higher score, the Nikon D850 just in every situation had better overall image quality. So these scores are kind of misleading. And you'll see they have similar portrait depth and the landscapes are about the same. But when you look at the sports, the low light ISO score, the Hasselblad has a much higher score. And that would indicate that the Hasselblad will produce much cleaner images at high ISO. But in practice, that's just not the case because Hasselblad doesn't have any fast lenses. And the Nikon has lots of fast lenses. So we're looking at almost a full stop difference there. Not quite a full stop, but the Nikon has lenses that are more than one stop faster than what's available for the Hasselblad. And as a result, when you talk about integrating the entire system and shooting, you get better results with the Nikon. What I'm saying is please disregard the overall score that you will see plastered all over headlines as DxO Mark ramps up again and starts to actually test these cameras. It is impractical. I would also like to issue a challenge. See this portrait depth, this number here that they so frequently advertise? Who cares? I've never had a photographer come to me and say, oh man, the portrait depth on this camera is just not good enough. Here's the challenge. If you believe portrait depth is important, take pictures with two modern cameras and one with good portrait depth and one with bad portrait depth and edit them as hard as you want so long as it's realistic and send me those pictures because I want to see actual real world photographic examples where portrait depth in modern cameras has made any difference at all. Now when DxO Mark started back in the beginning of the digital camera era, the portrait depth was significant because some cameras just had terrible portrait depth and especially under grading, you would start to see uh, poor color traits. But nowadays it's not meaningful and to label it as their portrait score is completely useless. Another very confusing aspect of this is that they measure portrait depth and landscapes in stops basically. But then for sports, they measure it in ISO, which ISO is linear and these stops are logarithmic. So a difference of one point, one EV in landscape is a full stop. That's meaning you get twice as much dynamic range. Whereas between, whereas in ISO, you would have to go up from 2,600 to 5,200 in order to see that same difference. So we often see cameras that have ISO scores that are different by 200 points or something. And that can seem like a lot, but it's pretty much a completely insignificant number. Here's an example side-by-side -side shot from our Hasselblad review where the D850 picture just looks better in every single way, right? Now, 
again, image quality is not everything, but if we're looking at just technical image quality, the DA50 completely blew away the higher scoring Hasselblad for a bunch of different reasons. And it also just straight up worked better. Like it just focused faster. It had more lenses available to it. It was just, it's just better. It was a more professional camera. That pretty much sums it up. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And again, I want, I want to send you over to sdp.io slash DXO, where I have a full video that goes into more detail. I just wanted to cover this quickly. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about photography, the things that really matter, like composition and storytelling and lighting, you know, those little kind of soft things, check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography. You can pick it up, check out the reviews on Amazon or go to sdp.io slash store. Use the coupon code YouTube for 10% off. The ebook is only 10 bucks. We also have books on Photoshop and Lightroom and a gear buying guide that covers lots of useful stuff like this. And our art and science of photography video training series, which goes into like deeper topics than we cover here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe for lots more helpful, nerdy videos, photography tutorials, and camera reviews. Thank you.